to another episode of Pimp Your Brilliance with Monique Malcolm, a podcast about brilliant people leveraging their passions to create their own opportunities. I aim to show you what's really possible when you shut down the course of fear and lean into your genius zone. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting keepchasingthestars.com backslash podcast or come hang out with me on Instagram at Star Chasers Only. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey, Star Chasers, this episode of Pimp Your Brilliance is brought to you by the Visionary Journal. The Visionary Journal is a goal setting guide, mini vision board and day planner. It provides a simple structure to help you break your goals into actionable steps that you can integrate into your daily life. Pre-orders are now open for the new and improved Galaxy Visionary Journal. For more information and to pre-order a copy, visit visionaryjournal.co. Hey, Ed, welcome to the show. Why, thank you, Monique. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm excited to have you because you are like one of my long term like <laughs> conference buddies. I know we are buddies and and uh, I love your positive outlook. So this is going to be fun. I'm excited to have you because you're one of those people who does like a really neat business and something that uh, I've been holding on to like when I think about this podcast. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I met Ed a few years ago at this conference called Camp, and they don't do it anymore. I think this year was the last year for it, but it's done by the people, uh, Sonia Rosala, who puts on Unique LA, which is this like curated, um, made in America, handmade show out in LA. And so we met at, at Camp, and I remember hearing her like talking to somebody and I overheard her say something to the effect of like, she doesn't know anybody who works a corporate business. Like everybody works these startups and businesses that they created. And I remember leaving um, camp thinking to myself, like, that is amazing. Like, I just spent the weekend with a whole bunch of people who made up their jobs. And so <laughs> um, and I, I've held on to that for like years. And when I started thinking about putting together this show, I really tried to focus on like, who could I find who made up a job that I want to tell people about? Because there's so many cool things that people are doing and the people that I have met over the years do. And I want to tell people about that. And so you definitely made the list because you are the only person who does the job that I know of that you do. I'm pretty sure there are other people, but you've been doing it for years. You've made it sustainable. And I'm really excited for you to share that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it's funny to hear you like made a job. I guess I did. (laughs) And, um, and, um, yeah, it's been, it's been uh, 13 years that I've been running Stencil One. So, uh, yes, I'm a stencil designer. And that's always interesting when people say, hey, what do you do? And I say, I'm a stencil designer. I have a stencil company because uh, that's predominantly what we sell. And um, they're like, I've never heard of that or met somebody who does that. So um, it's it's uh, it's a great passion of mine. So I'm glad I turned it into a job. Yeah. (laughs) Well, give us a bit of your background. Like, how did you get started? Why stencils specifically? Mm, Okay. Um, Well, I, I did make stencils as a hobby. um, And um, I also have a background in graphic design. I was, um, before starting the company, I was a web designer, motion graphics designer, and uh, did a lot of digital art and used Photoshop and Illustrator uh, a lot to create uh, stencils and artwork and paintings. Um, I used the digital tools uh, uh, to to do tactile projects. Um, for example, uh, design a stencil on the computer, cut it out by hand, and then make a stencil motif on the wall with it or make a painting with it. Um, So it's something I love, but I also have a um, beautiful admiration for um, stencil graffiti. And um, that is just uh, a wonderful art form that I was always drawn to and dabbled in myself. (laughs) So I... I set out, the way I started is I I set out to make a stencil book because, um, let's see, I started 13 years ago. So 13 years ago, 
there was no Pinterest. There were there weren't many websites. You didn't go online for design inspiration. You usually went and looked at design books, or you know you went to a museum or looked at graffiti or something in the in the real world. Um, and so I thought I want to make a book of stencils. Um, I was buying design books. I was buying stencil graffiti books, but none of them had stencils in it. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun if people could play with stencils in a book besides just looking at photos of uh, stencils? And um, that's what I did. I, I basically designed a prototype book. I still have. It's um, like I took apart a binder. I designed 50 stencils. I had them laser cut. Um, I, I created a fake, um, a mock cover and I marched into a few, um, <laughs> publishing houses here in, in New York. I live in Brooklyn and, uh, they were like, this is cool, but this might be quite expensive to make. And I didn't let it discourage me too much. Um, so I, being a web designer, I built a really bare bones site where I sold those 50 designs. Um, and that's how I started. Uh, so the book didn't happen, um, right away. Years later, I was contacted by Chronicle books and they said, Hey, we should do a book. So that's why I have books now. But, um, at first it was this vision of a book that became a website store and, um, and just started selling um, and the way the word got spread rather fast was, um, and this is something I learned, um, which we all learn in business now is, um, you need press and, um, a, a blog wrote me up called cool hunting, coolhunting.com, And they're still strong and amazing, um, uh, place to, um, go see for uh, the latest gadgets, the latest sneakers, like they're always on it. And in them writing me up, the New York Times wrote me up soon after, did a little little article on me, and I was like, oh. <laughs> um, so that's how it started, like just kind of uh, a little art project. I wanted to make this book, and then it became, um, now it's a business. Um, I mean, that's like jumping from way back to now, but obviously a lot of ups and downs in between and, and uh, books and other products that we sell now. And, and, uh, yeah, that's how it started. 13 years. That is crazy because I mean, you're basically ancient <laughs> in the internet years <laughs> because I mean, I tell people all the time, I, I started my first blog in 2008 and that feels forever ago. Cause I, I think about like when Twitter was just for like tech people, that's all yeah. that was on Twitter. Um, and it was like right. a weird place to be or like when, Facebook was only open to college kids and like MySpace was the thing. So it's it's so funny to think that you had a business that existed back then and you're still yeah. doing it. So Right. <laughs> before Etsy, before it was easy to build a shop. Um, yeah, it, it's quite funny to look back and think that wasn't that long ago, but, you know, things have progressed and they, they do continue to progress. So um, on such a speed, I... I I'm just happy to keep like learning as I go. And, um, you know, it's interesting. This whole um, <clears throat> playing field is sort of leveled where stores are closing and everyone's shopping online. It gives you, the online um, store, you know, a, a great a great chance at competing with big companies. So um, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your, your style because you have a really distinctive stenciling style. I mean, it's like you said, you've been inspired by stenciled graffiti yourself. So where yeah. do you get inspiration? Because, I mean, you've done everything from like pine trees to I think I actually have an astronaut stencil of yours and like mm -hmm. some high mm -hmm. heels and lips and different things like that. So where do you get your inspiration for your designs? Uh, I think... Um I'm drawn to a lot of pop culture stuff. Um, I think I I grew up in New Jersey, and I grew up with older parents, and we had a lot of 50s things in the house. Um, I 
have always been drawn to um, sort of retro and kitsch stuff. Um, and then uh, I also love nature and, uh, you know, we, we, I grew up with a, a nice big backyard and, and spent a lot of time outside. Um, so these are, I just try to design things I like, but I do always keep in mind, okay, does somebody, I, I would say more so now I say, well, will somebody want to use this? Will they want to put, um, well, you know, like you said, the astronaut. Well, will enough people want to put the astronaut on a T-shirt or on their wall or the kid's wall or something? Um, and then I'll do it. Um, I mean, I never get rid of designs. So you can see my 2004 designs on my site where I was like, I want to design a vacuum stencil, a stencil of a <laughs> vacuum. Like, but I think vacuums look interesting. So... I put up a upright vac vacuum and, and, you know, I think I sold five in the last 13 years of that one, but, um, <laughs> um, but I like them. So some of the things I make were simply just cause I was, thought they were interesting looking. And, um, but as I see people love birds, so I make more birds and, uh, I love birds too. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, then you watch the trends, which is nice. When you're an icon designer, um, you look at, you know, tropical leaves right now. Um, I couldn't not design tropical leaves because not only do I love them and uh, they're trending and and I could see, you know, people painting them on their clothes, on their walls. Uh, it's, it's a very useful um, design. So that had to come out. Um, so to answer your question, it's things I like, um, but also, um, watching the trends and, and now thinking about, will I, will it be worth for me to, to make a stencil of it? Will enough people buy it? Yeah. So that question kind of spurs and segues us into talking about making money. So you've already mentioned that you had a book and actually you had more than one book. So yeah. I would love to talk about how you have sustained this business. Cause I mean, 13 years, that's not a short amount of time. And you know, when you mm -hmm. think about businesses, it really is ancient because a lot of businesses, especially creative businesses fail in the first couple of years. So how have you mm -hmm. been able to sustain the business and grow it? Like what are some of the opportunities that you've taken advantage of? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the way I make, uh, income with the company is, um, and I've, I've opened my head during this whole process, the 13 years. Um, so I initially made money. I started by selling product, selling those first 50 stencil designs online. Now it's over 400. So, um, keeping the line fresh, offering a lot of, um, new design, so one way I make money is selling products. Um, but the other ways are um, I've put out books with Chronicle Books. It's more product, but I guess technically that's almost like a licensing agreement. Um, you write, a, write the how-tos for the book. I put stencils in the book. And, and um, Chronicle are one of the best uh, wonderful design staff. So they, uh, put the book all together, um, beautifully with our photos and stencils. Um, so we have the book income, we have the product income. Um, I do events. Um, you met me at an event where I was running a DIY. So we'll do a uh, we'll partner with a larger brand and we'll do DIY events in their space or at their event. Um, and that's nice because you're meeting people, you're painting with people, you're showing them your product. And then you have all these people that now um, have come to love your product because they got to play with it and they got to make themselves something. So uh, the events are 
extremely rewarding as well as now we do events with uh companies like the gap levi's um clark's shoes uh hugo boss uh, we've done a bunch over the years um and those are companies that really appreciate the maker movement and they also have the perfect canvas for for uh, diy projects they make denim and t-shirts and things that I paint anyway. So we show people how to customize their clothing at the events. Um, and then I do custom stencil work for uh, uh, customers as well as uh, I do installation work predominantly in New York. Uh, I've done uh, hotel rooms and uh, some residential. I have a new uh, few projects coming up that are residential, but mostly are commercial. Um, where we design and cut custom stencils and then paint them inside uh, the interiors. Um, so that's all the different ways. When I started, it was like, oh, I just make products. And then somebody said, well, can you paint this in my place? Because I don't want to paint it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, all right. <laughs> so uh, I kind of just learned as I went. And um, of course, with the products we sell now to um, not just off of our website, we're, we're selling wholesale to um, I'm on target.com, Home Depot.com. Uh, we're inside Blick Art Materials um, stores. Um, I've <laughs> lines that went into Michael's, but um, we predominantly sell to mom and pops across the country, which is my favorite type of store. Um, there's a new chain around my area that um, is called Artist and Craftsman, and they're a growing chain, but um, they still have that small mom and pop feel, and um, we sell there now as well. So, uh, yeah, it's just like you're you're growing every day with your business and learning learning new things. And you know what? That's I mean that's the epitome of pimping your brilliance. Like you took this one idea. And you expanded it and you leveraged it in different ways and, and found out, like, figured out other ways to make it work and to monetize it. And I think specifically just, the, like you said, doing the installations for, like, hotels and different things like that. Like, who would think that starting a stencil company would, like, lead into an opportunity like that? But I think that's so neat and such a, a great use of, one, your product and your expertise um, and just your brain as a whole. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just the universe has a lot of things out there for us. We just gotta, you know, keep your keep your mind open to it all. Um, yes, I'm 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 gonna get a little little spiritual, little hippy dippy on some people here. <laughs> but uh, I I do like to um, you know just let myself expand. I'm I'm uh, now doing. New uh, wallpaper, wall decals, um, experimenting with woven materials, um, uh, taking the designs I've made and and putting them onto soft goods for for sale. Not everyone is a DIY person, so um, why not? If I've painted pillows for 13 years, why not start selling the pillows? You know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask you about your team. So I know you kind of run with like a small team, but you're working with like these large brands and major brands. And how mm -hmm. how are you managing this all? Like what is your, do you have any secrets like that ways that you manage <laughs> or maintain like your sanity when you have big projects or big companies that you're working with? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I've, I've had some meetings with some, um, companies I'm going to do some work with and I show them what I do and they're like, um, how do you not kill yourself? <laughs> like you're just, uh, you're just, when you're, when you're keeping it lean based on your budget, you know, New York is, let's keep it real. New York is not cheap. So, um, uh, to live here and work here and have a business here is, uh, an expense, but I, I love it here. It's inspiring to me. Um, I will say I don't, I don't see the need for a big team, especially if you have multiple skills and have the energy. Uh, um, 
I've worked at so many companies where there's meetings about meetings and there's too many people involved. And um, I've even worked with major craft companies where I see so much of the profit go out the window because there's too many people on the project. Um, I think um, I like design, but I also like marketing. So I, I like to uh, do both of those for the uh, for the products. And um, but I will say I I had to learn business um, along the way, and I don't love working in Excel. And and uh, when you start to sell to very big stores, there's there's a ton of paperwork. So um, I've been fortunate to hire assistants um, who have a lot of energy because they're half my age and they act love Excel and they love design. So <laughs> finding that right, <laughs> finding that fit, you know, oh, okay, you know, Home Depot sent us all this paperwork um, and, and we need to have an image of every single stencil we have and blah, 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 you know, all the production work. And so um, I, I did grow up, uh, my background is, um, I've done a ton of production jobs at, um, at uh, television networks and um, motion graphics houses um, and, and even animation houses. So I've had to like, like just hunker down and sit there for hours doing um, uh, mundane projects. So I think that whipped me into shape for, for this. And um, so I do have an assistant and luckily my product is made in a warehouse where there are um, people making the stencils, packaging the stencils, shipping them. Um, and then I'm always working on new partnerships with other manufacturers. Um, one thing I never wanted to do was also be my own manufacturer and, and be overseeing a warehouse. Um, I need some time to remain for design. So, uh, I'd rather partner with manufacturing companies. So, um, that's what I do. And, uh, uh, it, it's a lot, but, um, if you can, slowly afford to hire part-time assistants to do the things that you're not so great at. I think that's a great uh, tip to give to people, even if, you know, somebody's looking for a few hours a week work until, okay, maybe I can't afford to grow, uh, pay them a little more, do a few more hours work because um, I, you know, to get ahead, I need to do all this paperwork, but I'm busy doing other stuff. So um, that, that's how I've slowly grown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's an important lesson to learn. I actually just hired about a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, an assistant to help with podcast stuff. Um, Great. Just because recording and editing is fine, but it's all the other stuff that needs to go into getting a show live and posting it and Twitter, and it, it just was taking too much time. <laughs> and I just got yeah. to the point where I was like, I don't like it and I don't want to do it anymore. And it's, I mean, she's cut my a, a day's worth of work into like two hours worth of work for me now. And it's just amazing. Best decision mm -hmm. ever. So yeah. if you find like some, certain things are taking too long and you just don't want to do them to the point where you're not doing them well, hire out, send it to somebody yeah. else and uh, figure out a way to work that into your business expenses and budget because it's worth every single penny. I promise right. you. But so and you know, go ahead. and believe and believe that you know I could I, I when we do these things when we talk like this and uh, it's easy to say well how am I going to find someone and nobody or, just get rid of the negative thinking too like just it'll come just stay positive about finding a person to to help you with that you know especially if you're near a school or know some young students or kids that. It's really, um, you know, it's it's what I did when I was younger. Was like I, I worked from a younger age, like you know, crazy production jobs, and I'm like, 
oh yeah, they didn't want to do this stuff, so they gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna say something kind of woo woo, but I actually feel like I manifested this assistant just because I told uh, my accountability partners maybe like a month ago. I was like, I cannot manage the podcast and trying to put out an episode every week. It takes too much work. And I was like, I think officially I'm at the point where I know what the workflow is. It's well documented and I need somebody to come and take this on. And so I told them, I was like, I'm just putting it out into the universe that I need an assistant. And I reached out to somebody that I knew did the work. And she was like, I'm not actively looking for clients, but she was like, I can help. And Hmm. so we hopped on a call and I talked about what I needed and, you know, here's my setup. And she was like, I can do that. And we are. (laughs) So sometimes you have to put that out into the world, like what you need and believe that it's going to come back because it's necessary. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) So, you know, you kind of mentioned this, but not all parts of running a creative business are rainbows and unicorns. There's challenges. (laughs) So talk to me about some of your challenges. Oh, boy. The first thing that comes to mind is um, I I am so proud that we are sold on Target site right now. Um, and that started about four or five months ago. But the setup and the paperwork and the time and the process were – I could see why a lot of people aren't selling on there. <laughs> um I mean, first of all, they they chose us, which was, um, you know, feels great. Uh, Much of my larger company competition are not sold on there because Target wants to be unique. Target, they loved my presentation. They liked hearing that uh, me, the founder, I'm the designer. They liked the whole story, um, which uh, I was happy to um, meet with them and tell them how I started all this, just like I'm telling you. And and they loved it. And uh, all of our SKUs are on Target.com and selling really well. Um, the challenge of was months, months of paperwork. Um, and um, you take a hit, you know, you're, you're taking your eyes off your other b- parts of your business when you're this small. So um, th- those are challenges, you know, the the paperwork, <laughs> uh, dealing with companies and, and they're very busy. So you, you have a question along the way, you'll wait days for the answer. Um, and I, I don't mean, uh, just target. I mean, all, all big companies, obviously they have many, many vendors. It's understandable. Um, so, uh, that's a huge challenge. And then I, I guess, uh, doing sales, I, I, mentioned to you before the call today I'm a salesman so I'm uh I don't have a sales rep so we uh reach out to buyers and um present them with our new products and uh, so wearing many hats um and my tip on wearing many hats is you know don't try to wear all the hats the same day take Take, I'm a list person, so I'll look at the list of everything I have to do, and I'll say, well, today's focus will just be on sales. Um, I'm not going to design today. I'm not going to uh, – you, know, you have to pick and choose what, which is the focus. Uh, if you try to fo- do a few things, it just won't happen. So, um, yeah, being gentle like on yourself, like, okay, I know that I can – put up that blog post tomorrow instead of today. And today I can call this list of buyers and show them what's new. And, um, I think that's, that's, uh, the challenges, uh, the biggest ones I could think of right now. <laughs> There's a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's the nature of having a creative business. Everything is a challenge, I swear. So yeah. the, the challenge is just getting up and doing it every day. But, you know, on the, the opposite end of that, what do you feel have been your keys to success? Because, I mean, 13 years is nothing to turn your nose up at. Huh. I think listening to some sayings start to really become true. Um, when you're 
really knocked down from something in your business um, and somebody's like, you know, it'll take time, but you can get back up and get back in the game. Um, I think believing that and giving yourself a moment to brush off the dust, um, you know, some deals you do don't always go right. Some things you release don't sell. Um, stores come and go, buyers change. Um, so, but, but you keep going and that, I mean, what else, what else can you do? Um, uh, so I think I've stayed around because I believe in myself and I stay current and I keep, uh, open to the ideas of how I can grow and, um, who I'll work with and, and how the business will, uh, develop, um, and believing that you deserve a piece of the pie. Um, why does some big corporate company with no soul deserve a space on the shelf in the store and you don't, but your stuff's so awesome? Like, I, I'm all about like some Oprah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you, you do deserve, um, you know, uh, definitely there, there's, there's a lot of, um, opportunity and there's no reason that you can't have that opportunity. Oh, I love that. I love exactly what you just said. And that's, that's going to be your quote for the show. Cause that, I felt that in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you and I, you and I have that in common where we, we, uh, we, we think positively or we try to, and, you know, everybody's human, you know, that's why, uh, I do listen to certain audio books and, and certain speakers. Um, uh, I meditate, um, I practice positive thinking and I, I just, uh, think it aids in, in business for sure. And personal growth, of course. Oh, yeah, of course, because, I mean, it's hard. I, I think one of the things that I really want to people to get out of this show is, one, me interviewing people who really aren't that different from them. Like, I think sometimes people tend to think creatives or people who run businesses are, like, superhuman, and we have this thing that other people don't. And that's not the case at all. Like, we still get scared, and we still feel rejection and when, you know, things that work out or, or trying to, you know, taking on new risks, but we think positive and, and we believe that it can happen and we move forward. And I really think that's one of the key differences. It's not that we have anything extra special. So it's a lot of it is trying to stay positive and, and give yourself the pep talk so that you can keep going. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. All right. So if you had to sum up the last 13 years into one big lesson, what do you think it would be? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stay true to yourself and make sure your brand has a soul. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Stay to the point. Stay true to yourself and make sure your brand has a soul. Which, you know what, is really important if you are a small business and if you are the face of your brand. Um, those two things are essential because that's what sets you apart from bigger businesses. Um, yeah. Coca-Cola cannot emulate what you have. They can imitate, but it's not <laughs> going to be what you have because you are who you are and you stay true to that over the last years and you've made it work. So mm -hmm. I like that. I think that's a great lesson. All right, so we're kind of down to our final questions. Um, so I'd like to end the show with two questions. My first one is, I call it the Pimp Your Brilliance Action Challenge, which is you offering three tips or your top advice for someone who is interested in getting started and creating a business that sells modern DIY tools. Hmm. I think you just start with what you got. Like some people say, well, oh, you must have had a lot of money to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I luckily knew how to build my own website, but now you have Etsy, so you don't have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can start small. I, 
I did work. Um, I didn't suddenly start the company and have this full time job at my company. I I worked while I started Stencil One, and uh, so you can start on the budget you have. If you want to sell five things on Etsy, um, you know, start there. So just start with what you have. Don't make the excuse that you need, you know, a half a million dollars to start a company or something. Um, what else? Um, I'd say um, be, design from your your heart. Like make sure you're not just looking in the other lane at, at somebody else's stuff and copying it. I mean, the karma, keep your business with good karma. <laughs> And what else? Um, perseverance and and listening. I think listening. Like there are a lot of mentors in the world, so um, I have many, and I've taken a class, and then I've kept that teacher's contact information, and I buy them a coffee every few months and say, you know, here, you know, what do I do now with this like licensing agreement or something? Um, so I think listening to you, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. People have been where you want to go. So uh, it's research and listening to those to those lessons. Um, and, and, you know, like 90 percent research. So I would say those are some good tips for for starting off. Sure. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then books. So what have you read currently or what have you read that has blown your mind? Mm. Um, uh, oh, gosh. So I'm like a uh, like a self-help weirdo. Um, I love they still relate to business, but they also are a lot about personal uh, growth. Um, so. Jen Sincero, I think, or Sincero, um, she wrote "You Are a Badass," which you have to buy the audiobook because her her voice is <laughs> she's such a funny person, um, and it's very empowering, uh, self empowering book. "You Are a Badass." Um, I am currently reading a book that I'm uh, obsessed with called "Breaking the Habit." of being yourself and that sounds like a funny title because it sounds like you don't like yourself <laughs> but um it's it's um if anybody's read the secret or or something uh watched the secret because you could watch it on netflix um it's it's a, a lot about positive thinking but it goes into uh deeper into the quantum field and how Anything, any path is possible in the quantum field around you. And so get get rid of the, the habit or the path that you don't like and replace it with the one you do like because it's there. So just meditate on getting to that point. Um, and uh, the author is Joe Dis... How does he say... Dispenza, Joe Dispenza. Um, and there was another book I liked, and it's it's a very old um, book. I'm listening to the audio book because the guy's voice is so funny. Um, older gentleman, and this book is must have been from the 30s that he would do these public speaking um, events, and it's called Think and Grow Rich. And... It's by Napoleon Hill. Oh, You're Right to Be Rich. I thought it was called Think and Grow Rich. Um, and um, it's about being rich in your world, uh, rich, leading a rich life, not just uh, money. Um, but it is about business as well. And um, he's such a forward thinker if you think back to when he's uh, – presenting these um, speeches. Uh, so I love those books. And I love Deepak Chopra. So I listen to his meditations. Um, not quite a book, but uh, he has books out. So um, 
Yep. Those are my favorites. All right. Well, I will definitely list those in the show notes if you guys want to check that out. And finally, my last question is, how can listeners get in contact with you? Where can they find you online? Oh, um, well, my website's stencil1.com. My Twitter is at stencil1. And this is always the numeral one, not O-N-E. And uh, facebook.com slash stencil1. And um, gosh, I guess I have a lot of other links on my website as well. So um, through there, through there. All right. So the main ones, basically stencil one all over the Internet, the main place we can find you. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Well, thank you again for agreeing to do this. I love getting to talk to you, Ed, because you're just so nice. Um, and I love getting to hear parts of your story that I did not already know prior to this. So thank you for being a guest. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me on here. And um, thanks for all who are listening. It's very, very sweet to connect with people. And that's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening. Learn more about this show and get access to show notes by visiting keepchasingthestars.com. While you're there, make sure you subscribe for updates. I'll be back next week. And in the meantime, go out there and pimp your brilliance.